a lot goes on in the life of a fat developer. Crazy things. Crazy things, people. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Susan here. Today I'm going to be talking about what a front end developer does, like the day to day life of a front end developer. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Thank you for clicking on this video and watching and going ahead to watch. If you're returning, welcome back. It's good to have you here. Before we go into today's topic, let's do a quick debrief what front end development is all about, right? Because I am under the impression that some people know what it is and some people don't. So, front end development is basically let me give you a typical example. You go to facebook.com, instagram.com, google.com. Everything you see on the page, the lists, the buttons, the space where you can impute stuff, right? The text area, all those things. Those are the things that a front-end developer builds, right? The things like the chat bots, those creepy things that ask you, how was your day? Or how's your day going? How can I help? Right, those chat bots, the front end <laughs> developer creates those, right? Creates those things. So, because the front end developer creates these things, you and I can go to the website and click on a link that shows me more about an item on, on Amazon or adds an item to the cart or check out somebody's profile, right? We don't want to say things like stalking here because this is a positive channel. <laughs> so, checking out someone's profile, adding stuff to cart. These are things that you're able to do because the front-end developer has built out an interface that allows the user to perform those functions, simply put. So we have established what front-end development is on a high level. Let me now take you through what a day in the life of a front-end developer looks like. So like every other normal person, a front-end developer gets to their desk in the and they check out their emails, they respond to messages on Slack, they or they try to at least. <laughs> they check out their emails, they try to see whatever is urgent, whatever needs to be organized. And by the way, disclaimer, this is not the routine for everyone. This is just like a typical routine for most people, right? But I'm just going to be imputing things that are specific to the front-end developer in this video. Basically, I mean, for the developer to be able to build out those interfaces, right, that they can use on their, that you would see as the user, they need to be able to write code in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and other front-end frameworks like React, Vue, Angular, and so on and so forth, right? So they need to be able to write code using those languages. And then it's time for stand-up. Now, it's not always time for stand-up in the morning. Some people have stand-ups in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the night, depending on what your team is comfortable with. But majorly, this time is a time for you to give an update on what you've been up to. So for example, if I built out a whole page yesterday and I'm planning to build a different page tomorrow. Maybe I build the about page and I'm planning to build the contact us page. I will give that update. So the point is the standard time is the time for you to basically give your update about what you've been up to. It's also a time to call out anybody that's holding you back from getting your work done. <laughs> and I don't mean call out in a bad way. I mean that you basically inform the team that you are held back from doing a particular task based on somebody else's task. That way, everybody is kept in the loop. And if some conversations need to be had to make sure that person, you know, clears out what needs to be cleared out so that you can move on with your task, that's the right space to have that conversation. So another thing, amazing thing that front-end developer needs to make sure of is that the load time of your app is the, at the minimum, right? So if I'm opening this page, it should open very fast. I don't want I don't want my users to waste time on it on it because there's a very high chance that it will run away from that page and never ever be turned back to the page. So the way that we do this is to make sure that we are you know compressing things like the images, you are reducing your file size, you are caching things that need to be cached and by caching for those that do that do not know what this means, it means that you are basically saving a copy of 
anything that the user has sent before. So for example, if I go to the home page, all the content of the home page can be saved so that when the user revisits that page, you don't have to load it from scratch. It just comes you know, to their screen because it's saved somewhere in the browser. So these things enable the um, page to load faster because you're basically optimizing as much as you can to ensure that the user has a smooth and cute and nice experience. All right, so keep that in mind. So these are a few of the things that the front-end developer is likely to do before launch time. That's for those that actually go for lunch because not everyone does. Um, for those that work remotely, their lunch time could also be work time, could also be any other thing time. But the point is before lunch time, these are some of the things that they are likely to do. Now during lunch time, what's lunch time like? Okay, hey, Susan, let's go to that restaurant that we talked about the other day. The, the one that you just found, right? The one that you just found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's go there. What do you think? Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't see why not. Okay. I promise we are not going to talk about any coding stuff. Promise. Anybody that talks about it is in trouble. Okay, whatever. Do you know that I'm having issues finding why that, that book is? That stuff is causing me bored. I don't know what's going on. It's just it's stressing me out. I think the problem is when we to talk about good stuff. What's going on right now? Can I just have some? Can I just eat some, please, please? Thank you very much. Anyway, so lunch time for developers was kind of like what I just showed. For some people, they promise that they won't talk about good stuff, but they end up actually debugging your code right in the midst of lunch. But let's get past that. Some other things that you find the front end, the front end developer doing is that they would actually build apps and make sure that they are responsive. And what does what does this mean? I'm going to show you right now. So basically if you go to so you see like a yeah you see like a feed right now if I want to feed the mobile form of this on the web I can just open up my inspect and change this to responsive that way I can see what this looks like in a responsive view so for example on an iPhone 12 Pro so this means that the user can come to this page is responsive because you see how it looks on web. It looks clean on mobile. There's no distortion. Everything looks great, right? So this is what it means to make websites responsive, and this is the responsibility of a front-end developer, right? Another thing that the front-end developer needs to be able to do is to make sure that the app is accessible this means that people that are living with disabilities should be able to use the app well like it should be suitable for them right so people with issues vision issues for example should have the right contrast the the, the, the website should have the right contrast for people with vision issues so they don't have any issues like um, it's not painful to read basically, right? People with cognitive disabilities as well, the messaging on the app should be, it shouldn't be vague so that it's easy to understand. Also things like ensuring that images have a title because this helps people that have, you know, vision issues as well. So one thing that the front-end developer needs to be able to do as well is to consume data from the API. So. What this means is that, for example, let's use Instagram. I load my feed on Instagram. I've seen information or content from people that I follow. At least that's how it's supposed to be. Although recently I've been seeing them showing me content of people that I have no idea about. But that's not the point. The point is that for me to be able to see that data, I need to be consuming something called an API, which is what the backend is serving me. So backend engineers build up this data model 
right and then forward me the content that i'm looking for right through an api now i should be i should as as a content developer i should be able to consume this api such that i get this data i structure it properly for it to be user friendly for the user and then they can see the data so this is part of my role as a front-end developer. Now, there is one thing that we can't overlook when it comes to the front-end developer. This is one thing that you probably, you know, if you go about them when, when they are with their headsets and or you, this is something you probably find them doing. And that is writing tests, writing unit tests, writing end-to-end -end tests, writing component tests, you know, whatever that is for them. And basically, they do this to make sure that the features and the components work as they should. So these are tests that are written to ensure that those things work as they should. Now, the front-end developer is also responsible of taking care of bugs that are reported by the team, right? So. Um, now, this is not to say that all bugs are caused by the front end, but it's very easy to spot bugs that are being, you know, reported by the users and those users will have to make use of, you know, the interface to identify the bug. So technically, it's going to have to pass through the front end for the bug to be identified, if that makes sense. So the point is that in most cases, when bugs are identified, it's usually the front-end devs that are alerted and or that are bugged. <laughs> when the bugs are identified, the front-end devs are bugged to you know look into it and then we try to figure out what kind of bug is it is, whether it's a front-end bug, a back-end bug, a project manager bug. Okay, I'm just kidding, but <laughs> You get the point, right? So we try to think of, figure out where the bug is coming from and then have that conversation with whoever needs to fix, to fix the bug. Sometimes it's with the front-end developers, sometimes it's the back-end developers, you know, whoever that is. You know, sometimes it's just an issue that has to do with and the environment which is tied to deployment and infrastructure and things like that so we need to figure out what that is as well so before we go on for devs that are watching what is one thing that you do daily that is on this list or probably not i'd like to know what's one thing that that you do every day i'd like to know. please drop that in the comments below so who does the front-end developer work with the front-end developer works with the back-end developer as i mentioned before they consume the api that the back-end developer you know has built so that way they are able to get that data and you know display it for users um, so they work hand in hand with back-end developers to they basically collaborate with them right to make sure that the, the they are in sync with whatever is being built secondly they work with the project managers and basically they try to determine technical requirements, what the code is required, who needs to work on what, how long it will take to, you know, get the feature running and things like that. So the third set of people they work with are the product designers. And basically, product designers, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, I believe that's non-tech jobs um, that don't require coding. Um, they are the people that create the mock-ups and designs for um for an application right so the front-end devs have to work hand in hand with them to determine what's feasible what's going to work for the kind of project we're building you know reusable components things like that um are the things that the designer and the front-end developer are going to be having conversations about so let me just portray a typical conversation between a designer and a front-end developer this looks pretty different from what's in the design. Um, okay. Yeah, it looks very different. I'm wrong, I don't it. No sense. Oh, really? Hmm. That's probably a bug. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah, I'll look into it. I wonder why it looks weird. It didn't look that big when I was creating it. But yeah, I'll look into it. Anyway, this is sort of what a day in the life of a front-end developer looks like. Um, I'm a front-end developer. I'm actually a full-stack developer, but for the most part, I do a lot of front-end compared to back-end. And so, 
I do, I mean, this is pretty close to what I do on a daily basis. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please, um, if you liked watching this video, do the thumbs up so that other people can, you know, watch and learn as well, and also be exposed to the kind of content I create. And if you're yet to subscribe, please subscribe as well. Share this video with your friends, and I hope you had a good time, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.